Make sure that you have your pronunciation improvement plan progress report every week. Make sure you include it in your notes every week. And also, phonotactics, page 23. I noticed Sophie left notes for a lot of you. A lot of you did not summarize that page. Phonotactics, page 23, about odd syllable types. You need to include that. So hand it in, chapter 3, uh, 13, notes. Plus, uh, you have, you'll have chapter 14 ready on Wednesday. And we're going to have a short dictation. Short. They're always the same length. We're going to have a dictation. Everybody ready? Dictation? We're going to do English again. And it's mainly going to be <clears throat> focused on the same problem, which is final nasals. A lot of you still have trouble hearing them correctly. All right, spelling plus IPA. Number one, ready? Rain. Rain. Ready? Number two, rang. Rang. Ready? Number three, wrong. Wrong. If there's a word you don't recognize, spell it as best you can. The IPA will be the same no matter what. Ready, number four? Ren. Ren. Number five? Ring. Ring. Ready? Number six. Are we okay? Go ahead if you need to. Okay. Number six, rune. Rune. Ready? Number seven, ran. Ran. Ready? Number eight, rung, rung. Ready? Number nine, ron, ron. Ready? <clears throat> Number 10, run, run. I'm going to read through the whole list again. Check your work carefully. You can watch my lips, you'll get some cues. Everybody set? Just want to make sure that everybody hears it clearly. One, rain. Two, rang. Three, wrong. Four, ren. Five, ring. Six, rune. Seven, ran. Eight, rung. Nine, ron. Ten, run. I will give you one clue. There is one proper noun in there, one name, a personal name in there, one of them. And one word is less common, one word is quite uncommon. I can tell you that much. Okay, check your work as best you can, and let's put the answers on the board. The first one's correct, but when you're writing an R, make sure you make it clear because it looks sort of like a cursive L. It looks sort of like this. So make sure that you write it carefully.
okay? Make it a clear upside down R. Rain is correct. If you want to add nasalization, that's fine. You don't need it. Rain <clears throat> is also correct. But what is the vowel for rang? It's a, right? Not eh. The velar raising is very tita, that's very good. <clears throat> but this is udia a. And then add velar raising. Rang. <clears throat> okay? And three is correct. It's wrong, but it's correct. <laughs> okay? <laughs> wrong is right. And four. Four is one of those less familiar words. Rain is pronounced like this word. Rain would be correct for one. So you've got the IPA correct. Who is number four? All right. So this is fine, but rain is pronounced just like rain. Xiaoyu. And Jiaoliao. I said it was less common. In North America, it's extremely common. Jiaoliao is a really common bird. But if you don't know the word, you did the IPA fine. If you don't know the word, you, use, you need to use phonics to spell it. So how would we guess the spelling just using phonics? R -E of course, R-E-N, because it rhymes with, for example, den, men, etc. So just find a word that rhymes with it and then put a different consonant at the beginning. So um, the vowel is not right here. And five, ring, this is correct. Ring. Six. Six is rune. <clears throat> Who had six? Who had six? Okay, the vowel was oo, rune. If it were OU, and especially with the IPA there, that would be round, like in round. But it's rune. And you may not know this word, but. There we go. The runic alphabet was used in, in, uh, in Ireland and in Britain a long time ago before the Latin alphabet was adopted. The runic alphabet, they're called runes, R-U-N-E. So this is something you definitely should know as why when she's students. If you don't know, you can look it up. Look up the runic alphabet. It's triangular in form. It's kind of interesting. So that's rune. But the IPA, you should have been able to get. Rune. It sounds like room with an N instead of an M. Okay. So. <clears throat> Seven. Ran is correct. IPA is correct. Eight is rung, also correct. Just make your R's really explicit and clear. Nine is the name that I mentioned. Ron and Ron is not wrong for some some people in North America, some say Ron, but I said Ron, okay, which is, yeah. Okay, now I've got a bit of a loop and I'm going to fix that. <clears throat> Should be Ron, short for Ronald, there. Okay, Ron. And then the last one is Run. How about if I read through all of them and then have you repeat? And some of you are still having problems with some of the nasal endings, the nasal finals. We can try and work on those a bit. <clears throat> Number one, here's the echo. Rain. Go. Rain. Good. Rain. Rain. Good. Watch this one because this one and this one are difficult for many Taiwanese. So if you're having trouble, do practice. Once more, rain. Rain. Mm -hmm. Three, wrong. Go. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Four, uh, ren. Go. Ren. Okay, I'll cross this out because I was almost going to read this one. Okay. Four again. Ren. Ren. Go. Ren. Mm-hmm. And contrast that with rain and ran. Rain, ren, ran. Now, I know from my research that most Taiwanese read them ren, ren, ren. Most Taiwanese read them exactly the same. Probably not most, but at least in my data sample, the majority did. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay? Once more for number four. Everybody, ready? Question? Awandima. R O O N is okay. R O O N is okay. It's not a correct spelling, but it's very holy. It's very plausible. If you wrote rune for six, that's fine. It's not a word, but according to phonics, that could very well be printed, that could be written that way. Okay? Number five, ring. ring. Go. Ring. Mm hmm Okay. And we don't have reen, I don't think, in English. Reen. We have pristine. I can't think of a word with reen. But we have, for example, green. So we can contrast that with a final alveolar nasal. Because a lot of people here will say green instead of green. They'll have a velar final nasal. Why don't we try that? Ring. Ring. Mm -hmm. Green. Green. Don't make it too short. This is a very long e. The n is just a little bit at the end. He didn't din sui. That's the way. Let's try it again. The two of them. Ring. Ring. Green. Green. Good. All right. Six. Rune. Rune. All right. Watch that one because a lot of people will say room, room for room, and moon for moon. Remember we practiced those in class before. Why don't we try those? Uh, first of all, Fang Jian, room. Room. Uh huh. All right. This special kind of wenzi, room. Huh? Yue Liang. Moon. Good. Okay. Mm. The next one, ran. Contrast it with rang. Ran. 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 Okay. Jin zhi. Ban. Bang. Bang. Good. Bangs. Bangs. Okay, we usually use this in the plural. I've never heard I've got one bang. <laughs> um, but a gun goes bang, bang. And number eight, rung. Go. Rung. Good. Contrast it with, with number ten, run. So once more, rung. Rung. Good. I heard some hesitation. Rung. Rung. Uh-huh. Ten. Run. Run. Good. Okay, you're changing the vowel a little too much. The vowel does not really change. This is not a front vowel. It doesn't have velar raising. So it's not, for example, rung and then ren. Ren down tai duan. Let's try both of them again. Make the vowel longer. The final nasal is not very long. It's just a little bit affixed to the end. Rung. Rung. Uh huh. Ten. Run. Run. That was better. Okay. Your your tongue needs to be lower. It's not run. Mouth is wider open and the vowel is longer. Run. Run. That's good. That sounds more English. And number nine, short for Ronald. Ron. Ron. Good. Let's go through the whole list. No echo this time. Just read right after I do. Rain. Rain. Rang. 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 This is a little bit of a Rang. 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 That was better. So don't go too fast when we're going through the list. Just because we're going through a list doesn't mean that you don't get the pronunciation right because you're going too fast. Let's try it again. Rain. Rain. Rang. Rang. 
That's good. Your, your tongue has to go lower. This is A, this is A. It's going towards A, but it's lower. It's basically A with raising. Make it long, and the tongue has to be lower, not rain. It's rain, rain. It's somewhere between A and A. One more time. Rain. 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 Now it's getting better. Sometimes they sound a little the same to me, so make sure these are two very different sounds. Wrong. Wrong. Ren. Ren. Okay, don't make the N too long. The vowel, even though it's short, it's still relatively long compared to the length of the N. Ren. Ren. Good. Ring. Ring. Good. Rune. Rune. Good. Ran. Ran. Rung. 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 That was good. Ron. Ron. Not r, no r, no friction. That's from Chinese. I had a student who pronounced all her initial R's as r, ron, rung. We don't have friction in English. We've got rounding. That F3 is going to come down, but we don't have friction. <clears throat> ron. 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 Don't say wrong. It's not wrong. Once more. Ron. 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 Good. I didn't hear any friction this time. Watch that friction. No friction in, in English R. Ten. Run. Run. How about if you read them all to me? I'll say the number and then you read. One. Rain. Two. Rain. This sounds a lot like one. Make it longer and watch that final feeler nasal. Rang. And it's not A, it's A. So the high seal Rang. Go. Rang. That was good. Try it again. One. Rang. Two. Rang. Three. Rang. Uh-huh. Four. Ren. Mm-hmm. Ren. Ren. A is short, but don't make it too short. Ren. Ren. Uh-huh. Five. Ring. Uh-huh. Six. Ring. Good. Seven. Uh, I heard a little rang in there. Ran. 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 Some of you still are kind of mixing these two up. Ran. Ran. That's good. Six. Ran. Six. Ran. Seven. Ran. Uh -huh. Eight. Ran. Nine. Ran. Ten. Ran. Good. Any questions? Mark your paper, five points for each spelling, five for each IPA. Calculate a percentage score and hand them in, please. And it's Sylvie's turn, as I remember. Not as I remember, as I have written down. Everybody ready in your books? Page 173. The next possibility listed in Table 7.5 is the prenasalized stop, nd, which is in some senses the reverse of a nasally released stop. In a prenasalized stop, the oral closure, in this case an alveolar gesture, LV. is alveolar gesture, mm -hmm. is formed first, while the soft palate is lowered. Then there is a short nasal consonant. Short, not short. 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 Nasal consonant, after which the soft palate is raised so that there is a stop. So that there. So that there. Mm -hmm. the, the stop is released by removing the oral closure, in this case by lower, lower, lowering the tongue tip while the soft palate remains raised. Soft palate. Was a soft palate? You're making it a little too short. Ah is not a short vowel, remember. Ah, soft. While the soft palate remains raised. While the soft palate remains raised. All good, except for remains a little more A. Remains raised. Remains raised. That was good. That's good practice for many reasons. Getting the right rhythm, the right length, and also remembering raised is a Z sound. Um, everybody? <clears throat> while, listen, while the soft palate 
remains raised. Everyone? And put a nice pause after palate. We need to stop there. While the soft palate remains raised. Go. While the soft palate remains raised. That was good. All right, continue. Prenasalized -nasal stops occurs. Prenasalized, they're both stressed. Prenasalized stops occur in many African languages. African, watch the end. African languages. Right. What's the usual Taiwan way to say that? Listen. African languages. African. Uh, uh, uh. We're missing that articulation. The sojian in African languages should be African languages. Everyone? African languages. Good. Say the Swahili words. Nish. Bird, airplane. Mm -hmm. Wait, try it. Mm, day, day, day. <laughs> They've got the mm. IPA there. Mm, day, day. Right, because their spelling is almost like IPA. Remember from last semester. Because they only got a writing system more than 100 years ago. It was just a bit more than 100 years ago. So the language has not had a chance to change a whole lot. So it basically looks like IPA much of the time. Ndege, everyone? Okay, I may have the stress and everything wrong, but um, more or less it should be ndege. Okay, go on. Bird airplane, ntu. Ntu, ntu, ntu. Hey, there probably is not aspiration, ntu. Ntu. Mm -hmm. Wax. Swa Wax. Wax. Mm -hmm. Swahili is a language in in which the orthography itself is equivalent to a Hang part. Hang on a sec. Which is okay, but I say which in which the before a vowel in which the ortho in which the orthography in which in which the orthography itself is equivalent to a broad IPA transcription. Okay, everyone. Itself. Itself. A lot of you say itself. It's not itself. It's itself. Itself, itself, it's the answer, it's the once more, itself. Itself. Okay, Sylvie? Itself. Good. When you make, when you make the sounds. Mm? Make what? These. 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 Your Z, what's these? These. Everyone, when you make these sounds. Everyone? When you make these sounds. Watch when you. It shouldn't be when you, it's when you. There's a lot of habits that are allophonic in Mandarin that you're bringing to English. You're not aware of them in Mandarin. You do them Mandarin. You do them completely automatically in Mandarin. If somebody didn't point them out to you, you probably never ever notice them. But you're bringing them subconsciously over to, or just out of habit, over to English. But we don't have the same allophonic rules in English. So you need to pay special attention to things that look like they're really jimao san pi, really small things. When you now make... Hang on. When you make these sounds, everyone? When you make these, these. It won't be strongly voiced because of the s, but you still need some voicing there. It's because it's not these. When you make these sounds, everyone. When you make these sounds. Good. When you make these these sounds. Good. Be careful not to make the initial nasal component mm -hmm. component mm -mm. component. Right. Component into a separate syllable, make make it as short as short as possible. Right. So it's not a full extra syllable, but it isn't completely just one simple syllable. Like for example, red, ntu ntu. There is an extra sound there. Um, and we went through this table last time, as I remember, right? Let's go on. Stops with lateral release was previously with lateral release. Homie, C ten. Oh, you don't need that, but I think I heard was instead of were. That's why. Were previously discussed in relation to their occurrence in English. For example, in little, 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 little. Okay. Let's practice the lateral releases again. Everyone, little. Little. 
That's not the way I say it. This is British, not American. I say little. I have a tap and a schwa. But this is in British, little. 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 Close your Ladle. 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 All right. Not ladle. 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 That's something you can, you can do in your dialect. Okay. Ladle. Little. Ladle. Okay. In other languages, mm -hmm. they can occur initially in the word. Initially in a word. Initially in the word. Sometimes, as indicated by 11, in Table 7.5, laterally released stops can occur, occur with, a, with an ejective airstream mechanism. On these occasions, the stop ejective, culture, ejective airstream mechanism. Here it's contrastive. If it's not contrastive, we say airstream mechanism. Remember, everyone? Airstream mechanism. A little faster, airstream mechanism. Good. But here it's contrastive because we're adding something new and that's ejective. We didn't have that added to the phrase airstream mechanism before. So can occur with an ejective airstream mechanism. Okay? Ejective airstream mechanism. Mm -hmm. And watch it watch to make sure you say stream and not stream. Airstream. Everyone airstream. airstream. There we go. On these occasions, on these occasions, on these occasions, why is these stressed? Because what kind of contrast? It's unusual to have ejectives. So, you would lengthen it in Chinese. So, on these occasions, on these occasions, the stop closure for t is formed. The glottalic aggressive airstream mechanism. Ejective. We can put that uh, in. Ejective mm -hmm. airstream mechanism is set in motion. In motion. In motion. Mm -hmm. And then the stop is released. 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 Mm -hmm. Released Later laterally. <laughs> released laterally mm -hmm. by lowering the side of the tongue. The sides uh -huh. of the tongue. Good. Lowering. Low. Low side the low. Lowering. Good. I want you to read the sentence again, and I want you to pay special attention to the continuation rise. Try it again. On these occasions, the stop closure for t is formed. Mm -hmm. Is formed. Mm -hmm. The glottalic aggressive 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 mm -hmm. ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion. In motion. In motion. Mm -hmm. And then the stop is released. Uh, is released laterally. By laterally. Laterally. Mm -hmm. By lowering the size of the tongue. Of. Of. Everybody, O-F is not O-F, it's of. of. All right, I'm being very picky, but I think now by second semester, these problems that still remain, Let's try and get rid of them. And if you find that you've been corrected more than once, what should you do? Put it in your notes and put it in your pronunciation improvement schedule and work on it for a week. And Tina, I think one thing that you could work on is continuation rise, right? Until it's natural. You know how it works, but when you're reading, your old habit makes you go down at the end of every thought group. You tend to go down. So <laughs> if you start reminding yourself, then you can start to um, rise instead. Use the continu continuation rise. Let's try this sentence. I'm going to read it to you, and I want everybody to kind of keep your ears open, just like a tape recorder, just like, just like a recording device. We don't use tape anymore. So listen carefully and try to make a mental recording of this. And then I'll have Tina read it one more time with the continuation rises. On these occasions, the stop closure for T is formed, the glottalic, aggressive, ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion, and then the stop is released laterally by lowering the sides of the tongue. I want to read it again. Try to let it sink in. <clears throat> On these occasions, the stop closure for T is formed, 
the glottalic egressive ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion, and then the stop is released laterally by lowering the sides of the tongue. On these occasions, the stop closure for t is formed. Is formed. No? Is formed. Yeah. The glottalic egressive. Glottalic, your e The glottalic egressive ejective airstream mechanism. Mm -hmm. Airstream mechanism. Airstream mechanism. Air, not air. Air. Uh -huh. Airstream mechanism. Once more. Air. Air. Right. Airstream mechanism is set in motion. Mm, in motion. In motion. How, where do we draw? When? When do we start going up? When we need to do a continuation rise. Where do we have that change, that pivot? It's on the tonic stress of the phrase. So you need to find the final stress syllable in each thought group, in each phrase. So K. On these, oh, here it was these because of the contrastive stress. These will go up on these occasions. These occasions. So these gets the high pitch. Then we go down for on these occasions, these tonic stress. And then we can spread out the rest of that continuation rise over the remaining syllables. On these occasions, the stop closure compound noun for t is formed. We have only formed. There's nothing after it. So we have to put everything there. Um, the stop closure for t, no, t is actually here, sorry. T is actually the, con, uh, the tonic stress here. The stop closure for t is formed, t, even though it has no voicing. That's where tonic is. The stop closure for t is formed. That's just like on these occasions, t is formed. Then, the glottalic aggressive ejective airstream mechanism. Air gets the tonic stress because this is a compound noun within a compound noun. Airstream mechanism, airstream mechanism is set in motion. So we've got two, two continuation rises. Airstream mechanism is set in motion. And then the stop is released laterally. La is the tonic. We have to spread out the rest of the continuation rise over the remaining syllables laterally by lowering the sides of the tongue. Now we can go down because we're at the end of the sentence. So I'm going to do it in slow motion again. I know we're taking time, but this is something that is basically not taught in schools. Continuation rise isn't taught in the first place. And then exactly how to distribute the syllables, where you turn, when you spread it out over the rest, you need to First know the rules and then you need to practice. So listen again. On these occasions, the stop closure, you didn't, you didn't continuation rise, the stop closure for t is formed. The glottalic aggressive ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion. And then the stop is released laterally by lowering the sides of the tongue. Okay? Try it one more time. On these occasions, Good. the stop closure for t is formed. Is formed. formed. Good. The glottalic aggressive glottalic, you have to watch that k. Glottalic mm -hmm. aggressive eject right. aggressive ejective airstream mechanism mm -hmm. is set in motion. Mm -mm. Mechanism was good. Do the same thing with the rest of the sentence. Is set in motion. Is set in motion. Airstream mechanism is. You can you can pause there and go up, or you can just stay, stay on the same continuation rise. Airstream mechanism is set in motion. Airstream mechanism is set in motion. Quite in the Huaji Boy team. Airstream mechanism is set in motion. Try it again. The glottalic. The glottalic. I still don't hear your cut very clearly. The glottalic. The glottalic. Aggressive. Ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion. Uh, you're going up and down, but you can just stay flat and then go up at the end. Just keep it flat, low and flat. We'll just use air, air is the tonic, and then we're going to stay flat until we need to rise way at the end of that part of the sentence. The glottalic aggressive ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion. 
Airstream mechanism is set in. Airstream mechanism is set in motion. Then we go up. Try again. The glottalic. The glottalic aggressive ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion. You did it. Motion. In motion. Good. And then the stop is. And then. And then. Then can be 重一点，下一步呢？怎样怎样 ？And then. And then. And then. The stop is released. 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 Uh huh. Released laterally. Hmm. Look at me. Released. Laterally. Yeah. There we go. Is released laterally. There we go. Perfect.、Good. By lowering the low, side. Low. Low. Lowering the side of the tongue. That was good. Rhythm wise, you missed an S. Lowering、Sides. the. Mm hmm. Good. This final S issue is a really big one because. I notice in all my classes, students will just leave out the final s's, or they'll put them where they don't belong. For example, we had an idiom this past week in another class. It gives me the shivers. It gives me the shivers. 听了会起鸡皮疙瘩，或者会会颤抖。But students would write, "It gives me the shiver," and it just makes me laugh because it sounds so funny. Now you think, what's the difference? 一个或者好几个有什么关系？反正就是颤抖。But because 因为是固定的一个片语 ，when you're missing that s, it just sounds ridiculous. It sounds very, very funny. And I don't, I don't mean that to make anybody feel bad. But I'm just saying that you need to pay a lot of attention to those s's because your brain is programmed to ignore the s's. Okay? Your brain is programmed to ignore the s's. You have to fight your natural inclination to get them in. And this is really, really important because I just looked over homework from another class, and this problem is very, very. Pubian, it's all over the place. So whenever you see an S, go bing. I have to watch out because your brain is going to say, "Ah,、eh, never mind. It's not important." But it is.、Mm, how about one more time? The whole thing. On these occasions, the stop closure for t is formed. For t is formed. For t is formed. Yeah. The glottalic aggressive ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion. Don't go up. Say that. Stay low. Airstream, come on. Airstream mechanism is set in motion. You're going up on in, but it's in and it's low. Is listen, listen, listen. Is set in motion. Is set in motion. There we go. The glottalic. Take a listen. The glottalic aggressive ejective airstream mechanism is set in motion. You did it. Good. Aggressive. Aggressive. Good. Don't say aggressive. Aggressive is right. Okay, but your rhythm is very, your intonation is very good here. Go on. And then the stop is released that laterally. You say released. Released. Yeah. Is released laterally、mm -hmm. by lowering the sides of the tongue. Very good. The examples. The the, the examples in ten and eleven in table seven point five. Is from the native is uh, are、mm -hmm. are from a native American language, Nav Navajo.、Mm -hmm. How do we say this language name? Navajo. 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 The J takes its value from Spanish because it's very close to Mexico. Here we've got we're talking about t with a lateral release. Now、uh, we had little ladle, and those came at the end of the word. But in some languages, it can come at the beginning of the word. For example, pla, pla, pla.、Um, let's let's finish the next paragraph so we can at least get through this part. We'll look for examples during break. Go ahead. The only Africans. That can occur initially. Oh, oh once more, Africans. Africans. Right. That can occur initially in most forms of English are ch, j. Some dialects,、mm -hmm. for example.、Mm -hmm. 等一下 Contrast. You got some, it, everybody. Okay. Some dialects,、right. for example, London Cockney. London, London. London、right. Cockney. Good. Have a slightly affricated Afri stop, of a kind that might be written t, t with a small raised s. T with a small raised s in words such as t. Right, but they'll say t, t, 
tea. tea. I have some tea. Uh -huh. And Oh, I'm sorry. And we mentioned this in another class, I remember. Uh, somebody on the linguist list also observed this, that uh, Prince, uh, Prince William, is it? He, he has this. If you listen to his speech, he has a lot of t sounds for t's. So maybe during break we can find a video of him saying like bit instead of bit. Okay. Alveolar affricates also occur in German as shown in 12 in Table 7.5. In addition, German has a bilabial affricate, puff, 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 puff. puff. It's not puff, it's, you need to put them together, puff, puff. Get your lips ready to say P and then say an F right after it, puff. It's mainly a lip gesture. Rather than a p, you don't need a schwa there at all. You don't want a schwa there at all. So f, 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 f. as in fluke, 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 fluke. Africates, africates, africates right. can also occur with an ejective, mm? with with an ejective. Why are you saying je? Are you taking French? <laughs> Do you have French? Yes. Yeah, that, okay, that explains it. It's <laughs> a good reason. Ejective. Ejective. Mm -hmm. Airstream mechanism. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I was afraid that was coming. Airstream. Mm -hmm. Streamy, Jim Potuela. Airstream. There, that's better. Mechanism. Mm -mm. Airstream mechanism. There we go. All right, airstream. Compound noun. And then we're putting another noun after it. But that further noun is also unstressed. So airstream So airstream mechanism, everyone? Airstream mechanism. Okay, can you do it as fast as I do? Airstream mechanism. Airstream mechanism. That's good. Airstream mechanism. Airstream mechanism. Do you remember at the beginning of chapter six where I said everybody learn this? Because it's going to occur over and over again. So if you still have problems with it, please write it in your notes and practice it. And you'll get it. It needs to be a reflex. It needs to be 自然就冒出来了. If you have to think a long time, it will take too long. Once more, airstream mechanism. Airstream mechanism. Airstream mechanism. Mm -hmm. And German, flug. Flug. Flug is a plow, li. 可是飞机的班机 is flug. Flug, no p. Flug, F-L-U-G, flug. Uh -huh. Flug. That's a flight in English, and it's got the same origin. So, Tongyuanzi, once more, fluke. 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 All right, and the plow, fluke. fluke. So, watch my mouth when I'm making the two so you can hear and see them both. Fluke. 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 Can you hear them clearly? And can you, you can see them as well. They will probably be in a dictation. So, practice those two. Fluke. 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 Let's try it again. Fluke. 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 There we go. Okay. Example 13 in Table 7.5 is from Navajo. 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 Good. Which, in addition to the ejective Also have the Africa also. also have the Africa uh -huh. made made with a pulmonic airstream mechanism as in German. Mm -hmm. As in as in Good. German. Okay, like Sujian Tai. Tai. Uh-huh. And Tu Z U means two. Tu. Tu. Aho Liba Town. Town. Z A U N. Town. Too tight. They have T S at the beginning, but that's not Xi Qi because you've got it in Chinese. Tan, right? Si. Tan. All right. Um, we'll go over the meaning a little more carefully after break, so take a break. All right. We're going to start, but I mentioned that Prince William has this affrication of T's. So just listen. I, 
I think I listened to this one before. There should be some, but you're going to have to pay attention because they go by really fast. They'll come usually at the end of a word, or it might be at the beginning. Let's listen. Okay, um, I will try to find some, and then maybe I'll post them over into you phonetics. Because just grabbing them out, I had a list when I listened to the, this interview last time. Somebody noticed them and they posted a list of places where they occurred. Then it was very easy to hear them. But just pulling them out of the interview with noise and without earphones, it's a little harder. But he's really shy. <laughs> he's very shy. <laughs> Sorry? But, yeah. You, that's one of them, but. Yeah, but it is. So that's, that's an example. That's an example. Yeah, but. But. Okay. Um, the other thing that I dug out is they have, diff they have some of the data in different places on the net. If you, if you open up the file on the CD-ROM, it will take you to a place on the internet. And it's similar to one we were just at, but it's got more languages. So I found the one with more languages and they do have, um, they do have Navajo here. And I guess they don't even give you the table in the book, so I guess I will have to use the overhead projector, or use the projector here. And here is, here is the one I think that they were talking about. Let's um, go back to the paragraph where they mentioned it. Stops with lateral release. And they can, for example, and examples 10 and 11 in table 7.5. So 10 and 11 and 7.5, lateral release for oil or ointment. Here it is, right here where the cursor is. Listen. Okay, la, la. Okay, I'll play it a few times. Turn up the volume a bit. I'll play it a few times so you can hear it. Okay, everybody quiet? Anybody need to blow your nose? Get it over with, <laughs> okay? Otherwise, let's be really quiet. Ready? Okay, it's kla. Not k. It's look at the table. Here. Right here. And it does have aspiration here. So it's T. It's not a k, but it sounds a little like k, doesn't it? If you can't see the person's mouth and without earphones, it does sound a little like k, but it's a t. Because if it were k, we wouldn't call it a lateral release. Kla, kla. We have t, kla, kla, kla. I guess it's possible. But normally it's a t, like little ladle. And here it's a t, kla, t, kla. All right, try it with the speaker. Kla, kla, kla. All right, so make a T and don't lower your tongue. Keep your tongue tip on your alveolar ridge to make the L and there will be aspiration as well. Kla. 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 It's a little bit sloppy because there may be some saliva spitting, you know, that you're spitting. Yeah, you may be spraying a bit of saliva. And... They don't have the other example here, but that one has got an ejective with a lateral release. Look at number 11 on page 173. And that would be kle, kle, kle. So you need to make a, a, a T with lateral release and don't let down your tongue and then Make it ejective. Play. 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 Okay, that's what he wants to tell you. And then there's another one. And I think they have that here, do they? No? All right, the last one, number 13, that's just an ejective T S. Tsal. Tsal. Okay. So that was stops with a lateral release. Then we had affricates that occur initially. We have ch and j in English. These are phonemes. We have t and z 
not z. We don't have z, but we have t. And those are not phonemes. Um, they don't occur initially normally in English, they do in German. In English, they'll only occur usually in Walayu, like zeitgeist, but people usually say zeitgeist. We simplify them. So in English, we really only have ch and j, but in German, we have t and we have p, p. And then in Cockney, like we could probably hear in Prince William's speech, if we listen more carefully, we'd hear t, like t, t, instead of t. Okay, and then it mentions Navajo with the t initial, and also it can be ejective. And we've got that here. Sagebrush. This one, everybody see it? Uh, uh. I think the H there is, sometimes it means glottal stop, and that sounded like a glottal stop to me. Let's listen to it a few times. Just be quiet for a while. Uh, uh, uh. It sounds like a glottal stop at the end, and they've written an H here. So, and they have another one like it. But here it is a palatoalveolar. And it's a bit, what? You see a little symbol down here? Can you see it? That means it's a bit retracted. You wouldn't be at home yet. So let's listen to this a few times and then try it. Just listen a few times. OK, now try it. Listen. Good. Okay, so it's a palato alveolar with some retraction and it's ejective. And you can compare that to this one, which is not ejective. And then this one is aspirated, beaver. And it also has. Sounds like nasalization to me. Listen. Cha. I hear nasalization. Cha. Try it. Cha. Cha. Do you hear nasalization? Cha. 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 It could just be her particular resonances. Cha. Cha. I, it sounds a bit nasal to me. Cha. And then. This one again. Okay, so you can hear the difference between ejective and non ejective. Uh -huh. This one is really complicated. All right, we had ointment, and this one has nishtla with the ejective. Let's try that. Listen a few times. Okay, this is what it looks like again. I'll play it again and then try repeating. Nishtla. 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 Keep, keep your tongue tip on your alveolar ridge, making the T, and then the air is going to come out the sides of your tongue. Nishtla. 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 Uh -huh. Otherwise, it's centrally released, like ah, ah. That's centrally released because I'm letting my tongue down. Everybody, ah, t, not k, t, ah, ah, ah. All right. Now, don't lower your tongue. Leave it there. It's going to force the air to go out the sides of your tongue, and that's a lateral released, laterally released ejective. So, la, 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 okay, close ways in, okay. Um, I'll turn the light on again, um, and I don't know if we're going to need this. I suppose I'll turn it off for now. I'll turn it on again if we need it.
Let's go on. Next reader, please. Do we have any questions so far? This is new stuff, and this will be turning, these things will be turning up in the dictations. So practice these so that you can recognize them when you hear them. Nasals. We will now consider the other manners of articulation. The other manners of articulation used in the languages of the world. Little more need, need little more need to be said mm? about. 不要自己乱加字哦。Uh, need be said about nasals. Why do we not have a two there? We often use two. I need to go, right? I need to talk with you. But here it is like a modal verb, like a 情态助动词。Need 有时候是像情态助动词 ，like may or can, etc. May be said, can be said. Here, need be said. 它的那个功能就像个情态助动词。That's why we have no two. Try it again. Little more need be said about nasals, like stops. Like stops. Like stops. They can occur voiced or voiceless. All right. Leave a little pause there because these are. 非常实的两个实词 ，and we have a choice. They can occur voiced. Watch me when I'm doing it. They can occur voiced or voiceless. I would probably do this when I'm speaking, just like on the one hand, on the other hand, right? You don't have to do it, but you can do it with your pauses. So they can occur voiced or voiceless. Oh, they can occur voiced or voiceless.、Mm -hmm. For example, in Burmese. Which can be found in the Chapter Eleven performance exercises on、mm -hmm. the sea. What kind of exercises? And how is it spelled? Anybody find a typo? A typo.、Mm -hmm. Their typo is their problem, but we have to do our part correctly. What kind of a word is this? In the Chapter Eleven. No. How do we read it? I, I'm not worried about the exercise themselves. I'm worried about the pronunciation. <laughs> This is a. It's a compound. Yeah. So how do we say it? Exercise. Uh, exercise. Listen carefully. Performance exercises. Watch me. My my chin kind of goes down. Performance. Performance exercises. Go ahead. Performance exercises. Right. If you say performance exercises, how does it go? Then you're not using compound stress. Listen again. Use the echo and kind of use your chin to help you. Just like my American classmate who, ah,、uh, 讲中文也用头来画出声符 You can do it a little. You lower your chin a little bit. It's a little easier to remember and get it right. Perform. Watch. Performance exercises. Performance exercises. Go. Performance exercises. Okay, and don't say exercises. Actually, some native speakers do, but don't do it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Performance exercises、Good. on the CD. Good. As voices nasals are comparatively rare, they are symbolized simply by adding the voices.、Mm -hmm. Bye. Adding. Mm-hmm. What's the problem? Ing. What's the adding? Adding. Adding. Watch that, everybody. Adding. adding. When can you say adding? It's in a very casual context when you're just talking with your friends. No problem. I'm going now. No problem at all. But when you're reading a textbook, it sounds really out of place. It sounds really inappropriate. So with your friends, fine. I wouldn't encourage it that much, but if you're comfortable with it and you do it naturally, it's okay, no problem. But when you're reading, do not do that. Okay. Adding the voices diacritic under the symbol for under the under the、right. symbol for the voiced sound.、Good. There are no special symbols for voices nasals. All right. So we don't have a completely new symbol when we have a sound like ma. Ma, all we do is add a diacritic, and that's enough, actually. So we're okay on nasals. We've already talked about different nasals. We went into great detail about nasals on which page? Six, yeah, one sixty-six. 
We practice that. And since this is a very short paragraph on nasals, let's try those one more time. Hey, everybody from the upper left-hand corner. Everybody, gummy. Gummy. Bilabial, gummy. Gummy. All right, the next one, dental. Bunny. Bunny. Uh, bunny. Bunny. All right, next one's normal alveolar. Normal for us, we're used to it. Gunny. 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 All right, retroflex, curl your tongue. Gun, uh, gunny. 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 All right, palatal sounds like nya, like you've got a ya sound after it. Gunny. 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 Put a ya in there. Gunny. 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 Once more. Gunny. 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 That's an ooh there. Gunny. Gunny. Let's go through all of them again. Watch out for the ones in the middle. They're the harder ones. Gummy. 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 Bunny. 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 I'm trying to remember to lengthen the nasal now. Gunny. 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 All right. Retroflex. Gunny. 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 Palatal. Gunny. 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 Uh huh. And uh, gungy. A gungy, sorry. Gungy. 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 Good. Uh, gungy is interesting. Boiled rice and water. It's probably shifai. Yeah, that sounds like shifai. All right, that takes care of nasals. We're going on to. Fr- Do we have any questions? Any questions at all? Yeah. I can hear the difference between um, dental and alveolar. Um, Most of us are not good at it because for us they're interchangeable. It's just variation. It's something that happens. Like in Chinese, de te ne le and de te ne le, wu so wei. doesn't matter. Both, you hear both. Dental is more common. In English, I use alveolars, but if I use dentals, it would also be fine. Because they are not distinctive in either Mandarin or English, it's hard for all of us. So you just have to practice, that's all. So, gan ni, gan ni, gan ni, gan ni, gan ni, gan ni. If you listen after a while, you start to hear it. Somehow, n sounds more resonant and loud. Has more of a y sound to it to me. Maybe it shouldn't. Just listen carefully. I'm going to do it back and forth. Wendy, anything? Is clearer. Well, these are all kind of subjective descriptions. All you have to do is hear what the difference is. The descriptions don't really matter. Whatever makes sense to you is fine. So, gunny, 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 gunny. It's really hard. They're very, very close. Most languages do not distinguish between the two. This is kind of unusual. That's why they put it in the book, because it was interesting. It's a bit unusual. But listen to the sound files and train your ears. You can do it. It's harder for both English and Mandarin speakers, I think, because for us, the variation is common and it doesn't make any difference in meaning. Fricatives are next. Any other questions? All right, then fricatives. Uh, Fricatives. There are two ways to produce the rough, turbulent flow that occurs in in the airstream during a fricative. It may be just the result of the... Okay, I'm going to pick on you again if it's okay. Because you're so good otherwise. I want to just pick on the things that you can make even better. You're already really excellent. But you still have the tendency to go down a lot. It's better. You're getting better. But you still tend to fall all the way through the sentence at many points. So try not to let yourself fall until you get to the end of a sentence. If you see a period or a semicolon, then you can do it. But otherwise, keep your voice up higher. So listen. There are two ways, continuation rise, to produce the rough, turbulent flow that occurs in the airstream during a fricative. How many continuation rises did I use? How many continuation rises did I use? Listen again. There are two ways to produce the rough, turbulent flow that occurs in the airstream during a fricative. How many? Three? There are two ways, one, to produce the rough, turbulent flow, two, that occurs in the airstream during a fricative, three, yeah. And rough, 
Turbulent, that's a list of things. So those go up. That's not really a continuation rise. It is a kind of continuation rise, but it's at sort of at the word level rather than at the thought group level. Okay? There are two ways to reduce the rough turbulent flow that occurs in the air hmm? that occurs that occurs yeah. in the airstream during a fricative. That's right. So occurs is uh, let's see, two ways. Flow occurs. That could be a fourth continuation rise. That occurs, if you want to pause, you can. You don't have to. That occurs in the airstream, or that occurs in the, yeah. Both are fine. If you want to keep it more coherent and more than guan, then you don't need it there. That occurs in the airstream. That occurs in the airstream during a fricative. Good. It may be just the result of the air passing through. Of the air <coughs> passing through. Of the air passing through a narrow gap, as in the formation of. Good. Or it may be because. Mm, T. Watch the T. Or it may be because the airstream is first speeded up by being forced through a narrow gap, narrow, uh, through a narrow gap, and then and then is directed over a sharp edge, such as the teeth, as in the production of. S okay, it's getting better. You still have that. It sounds like you're still going down in some places, but it's much better. Listen to uh, my reading. Or it may be because the airstream is first speeded up by being forced through a narrow gap and then is directed over a sharp edge, such as the teeth, as in the production of s. So listen one more time. Or it may be because the airstream is first speeded up by being forced through a narrow gap and then is directed over a sharp edge, such as the teeth, as in the production of s. Can you try it one more time? Or it may be because the airstream is first speeded up. Is first? Is first speeded is first speeded up by is be, first speeded up. Is first speeded up by being forced through a narrow gap. Through a narrow gap. Through a narrow gap. There we go. And then it's directed over a sharp edge, such as the teeth, as in the production of s Good. Partly because there are these two possible mechanisms. The total number of the different fricatives that have been observed is have, large. Again, that have been observed. That have been observed. We say been in America, but been, been is British. That have been observed is larger than the number of stops or the numbers of nasals. Good, except for um, no S, and also it's too emphatic on number. Um, that have been observed, that have been observed, try that, that have been observed. That have been observed. Been observed. That have been observed. Right. You slipped into a velar, but now it's okay. Um, is larger than the number of stops or the number of nasals. Number bionamajong because it's repeated. Is larger than the number of stops or the number of nasals. Is larger than the number of stops or the number of nasals. Good. Everybody larger. Larger. On the pronunciation test I gave the people in the two pronunciation workshops this year. I said larger, and most people check larger. So you need to watch the R if you're speaking American. Um, larger. larger. Good. Go on. Table 7.4 shows 10 pairs of fricative symbols compared uh, of fricative symbols. No, you did it fine. Symbols. It was good because symbols are It's repeated, right? of fricative symbols mm -hmm. compared with seven pairs of stop symbols and eight nasal symbols. Okay, it's getting better. You're still dropping. Compared with seven pairs of stop symbols and eight nasal, nasal symbols. Because we have contrast here, a lot of it just gets ya ping up. Shows ten pairs of fricative symbols compared with seven pairs of stop symbols and eight nasal symbols. Shows ten pairs of fricative symbols. Fricative symbols. Fricative symbols. Uh -huh. Fricative. Fricative symbols. Fricative symbols. Right. Compared with seven pairs of stop. Seven pairs. Seven pairs of mm -hmm. stop symbols and eight nasal symbols. Very good. This is a good sentence for practice. Of what? Old information is not stressed. Contrastive elements are stressed. Actually, those two rules go together, because pairs is repeated, so we don't want to stress pairs. Um, so if we said shows ten pairs of fricative symbols compared with seven pairs, it's just like because we've already said pairs. It sounds like you think it's something new, but we've just said it. Ten pairs of fricative symbols 
compared with seven pairs of stop symbols and eight nasal symbols. Good. So let's look at the meaning now. There are two basic ways to produce the rough turbulent flow that occurs in an airstream or the airstream during a fricative. It could just be, 如果是空隙很细,很窄, for example, f, your lower teeth are against your upper lips, 它能通过的那个空隙是很细的,很小的, and that will produce fricative noise. Or it could be because the airstream is first speeded up by being forced to a narrow gap, and then directed over a sharp edge. For example, in si, you've also got a very narrow gap, your tongue against your palate, right? You're against your alveolar ridge, but then you've got the teeth that are blocking the way, and the air is being forced over a sharp edge, and that is going to also create a fricative noise. Okay, it's not just like, it's coming straight out of that narrow gap. It's coming out of the narrow gap and then hitting the teeth. And table 7.4 is on page, it's on page 172. So you can refer back to that when you need to. Uh, let's go on to the next paragraph. So far, we have classified fricatives as voiced or voiceless and as made with a number of different articulatory gestures. But we articulatory can articulatory gestures. Articulatory gestures. Right. But we can also subdivide fricatives in accordance with other aspects of the ge uh, of the gestures that produce them. Some authorities some, some authorities have divided fricatives into those such as s, in which the tongue is grooved. Is so grooved, grooved is an important word. It's kind of unusual when you distress it. In which the tongue is grooved so that grooved, 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 grooved. Yep. In which the tongue is grooved so that the air, air stream comes out through a narrow channel. Comes out? comes out mm -hmm. through a narrow channel. Mm, the first time was better. A comes out through a narrow channel. Comes out through a narrow channel. Mm. Narrow channel. Narrow channel. Mm -hmm. And those such as in which the tongue is flat and forms a wide slit. Wide slit. Slit is also a new word. It's kind of a surprise. Whenever there's a word that's a little bit unusual, it's a little bit of a surprise, slow down. Make it more emphatic and forms a white slit. 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 Slit is a xian. Do you know what xian is? Yeah, do you know what it is? If you don't, you're lucky. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Slit is snow mixed with rain. And when it comes down, it's very slushy. And then what happens? The temperature drops. It becomes ice, and then what happens? That's right, lots of car accidents. It's very, very dangerous. So when you hear sleet, we all kind of get kind of, kind of uncomfortable thinking about it. So sleet, S-L-E-E-T, and slit, slit is a Everyone Everyone sleet. Slit. Sleet. Slit. All right, we're not talking about the weather here, so this is slit forms a white slit through which the through air which. through which not which 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 short which, which. Uh -huh. the air flows through which the air flows through which the air flows air flows flows flows, flows. yeah mm -hmm. air flows mm -hmm. unfortunately not unfortunately unfortunately mm -hmm. not enough is known about fricatives known Everyone known. No. All right. Not enough is known about fricatives. Go ahead. To be sure. Mm, you read it. <laughs> not enough is not, no en not enough is known about fricatives. Not enough is known about fricatives. 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 Continuation rise. To be sure how this distinction should be applied in all cases. All. All cases. Good. It is also clear. Also. Also, right. clearly 
irrelevant for fricatives made with the lips, 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 and the back of the tongue. The lips. You need to pay more attention to e and i. More, yeah. You have to work on e and i. You can produce them perfectly. Your e is perfect when you're when you're thinking i, but you probably have some words where you're not sure if it's e or i, and then you read e when it should be i. So what they're saying here is that we have a classification for fricatives that's not very mature yet. Someone has suggested that we can classify fricatives into two types, one with a grooved tongue, 就是有一条凹槽, but don't call it a ditch, we don't call it a ditch. Okay. Um, we have a channel there, a narrow channel through which the air flows, and the other kind is, what's the tongue doing? Instead of having a groove, the tongue is flat, flat right? However, he's saying that this is not a very well-developed distinction or classification system. So, in other words, you won't get tested on it. <laughs> okay, next. A slightly better way of dividing... Slightly the better. All right, this is the contrast here. We need to work more on contrast. I think that's our duty for today, is you always have to be watching out for contrast and for new shizzi. Words that are new to the discussion, that are a little bit unusual, like slit is unusual, or narrow channel is a little bit unusual. Anything that's a little bit unusual, and it's very shi, you need to slow down. Say it slower, and say it louder, say it. It's going to have a higher pitch as well. So in other words, you need to emphasize anything that's new, because intonation is mainly about information value, right? Right? So that means we're going to emphasize it and make it easier for the listener to catch it and think about it and get it fast. Okay? A slightly better way of dividing fricatives is to separate them into separate separate them into groups of a uh, groups on a purely auditory basis. Right, and pause before prepositions into groups. Into groups on a purely auditory basis. What should we stress? Purely? <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, auditory. auditory, right. Because previously we were talking about, in the previous paragraph, see this is this thing about Lian Guan that I think very often is not really emphasized in language education. It's true of every language. It's not just an English problem. It's also the same in Chinese. Lian Guan Xing, context. So, what you have to, what you should stress here has a lot to do with what we just said in the previous paragraph. So, a slightly better means better than what we just suggested now. Because he already says it's not a very good system yet. People haven't agreed on it, it's not very developed. So a slightly better, so we're going to stress better. And then the next thing is separate. Let's go over that again. The verb is separate. Three syllables. Everyone separate. 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 The adjective is separate. 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 Good. All right. To separate them into groups on a purely auditory basis, because we were just talking about what kind of a basis? Articulatory. All right. So this is a really chimiao part of one of the chimiao parts of language that doesn't get taught. People just read and they go, "Oh, your English is fine." Well, no, you didn't reflect that you understood what you just read and you didn't make it easy for your listener to catch what was important. The important thing is we're using an auditory means and not an articulatory means. But if you don't stress it, the listener will miss that completely, right? It will just slip by. And this is true in teaching. I'm going to share a further thing. And that is in, in Ingting when I'm teaching stuff like this, that same stuff you're getting. At the end of the semester, many years, people would get very poor scores on the final exam. But I repeated them over and over and over in this semester, like, what's a stop? They didn't know what a stop was. And then when I asked them, they said, 上课好像有提到, That's what they told me. Do you understand what I'm saying? The teacher is saying it, and it's buried in everything else they're saying. So you don't know what's really important, and you have to pay attention to for the, for the what? For the door opening. <laughs> 
That's what happens when something new happens. It grabs our attention, all of us, okay? So it was maybe mentioned, say, I would say at least 30 times during the semester. We talked about stops. But when it came time for the final exam, most people didn't know what the stops were, what they, what they were, or which sounds were the stops. Now, how do you account for that? I mentioned it probably 30 times. But I didn't say, pay attention now. This is probably going to be on the... <laughs> then they started learning it. If I said, this will be on the test, then they started writing. Now, I can't blame, say, Taiwanese are worse at this than others, but in Taiwan, you are really, really oriented to learning for tests rather than trying to master the material. If you were learning to master the material, you would know immediately, stops, that's a new term, that's a classification. You know that's in important. But this happened year after year after year, and I finally learned, I'll say, this will be on the test, and I'll start writing, and everybody had their pens out, and they did better on the final. So we all have to find ways to get the other person's attention. Can we have their attention all the time for every bit of information? What happens if we try to do that? Fatigue. Fatigue. If everything is important, then nothing is important. So we have to use it very judiciously. That's a very good ad adverb here. To use something judiciously means 酌情而用. That means 看情况它真的需要你才用, because if you use it too many times, the listener gets fatigued judiciously. C-I-O-U-S-L-Y. J-U-D-I. Judiciously. Use it judiciously. 你先做个判断,你再用. You'll say, well, I can't think that much while I'm speaking. I have to concentrate on what I'm saying. That's why it's important to what? To? Automate. So, Because you have so many things that you need to do while you're speaking that you cannot think about them cognitively at the same time because we will get cognitive overload. Cognitive overload. That means it's cognitive overload. It's too much for us to manage, to tuli, to process at the same time. However, now this is an important point. We native speakers do it without thinking too much. That means that our brains can handle it under the right conditions. If we know it so well that we don't have to think too much, we just press a button back here and it pops out. If we have to do it bit by bit, you will never have enough time. Your listener will get impatient and leave. This was really an important point. I realize this sounds like a distraction, sort of like we're going off into a subtopic, but this is actually very central to everything in language. And you're going to have to plan each sentence because you're not native speakers. You have to plan. Even if you're almost to native speaker level, you probably may be missing some of these little bits. So you need to plan your sentence carefully. With the three rules of intonation, we stress content words, we don't stress function words. We stress new information. We don't stress old information. That's really what I'm talking about now. And we stress contrast. Two and three really go together. One also belongs to the same idea because shitsa have more information value than shitsa. So all of it, all the rules of intonation are about information value. And there are different levels, the information value. For words, oh, this is a noun, this is an advert, uh, adjective, this is a verb. So we know just from looking in the dictionary by the part of speech that it is a shi si because those parts of speech carry more information than do shi si. Shi si, they talk about grammatical or spatial or other relationships. They're about relationships. They're not about things. They're not about actions. They're not about colors or temperatures. They're about the relation of one thing to the other. We call them shi because they're sort of like the shreini that holds the kuai together on a wall. So those are not so high in information. They're important. You need to pick the right one in the right, in the right situation. But they don't have a huge load of information for you. They just, they're mainly about relationships. They're about definiteness. If we've talked about it before, if we have not talked about it before, I see a boy. That means we haven't talked about him before. I see the boy. That means we were talking about him before. 
So Shitsa are going to tell all kinds of relationships, you know, whether something has been mentioned before or not, um, tense, whether it happened earlier, whether it is happening now, etc. That's sort of involved. You know, those are all the grammatical parts of language. So you really need to plan a sentence carefully. Um, how about if we finish this paragraph? A slightly, can you do it again? A slightly better way of dividing fricatives is to separate them into groups on a purely groups. Pause. into groups mm -hmm. on a purely auditory basis. Okay. Say the English voiceless fricatives. Which two have the loudest high pitches? All right. Um, why don't we just stop there? I wanted you just to get through that that, that sentence mainly. We'll continue from there. Put a little mark in your book, and Amy, you start next time. We're on page 175. So what do we need to have ready for Wednesday? I thought we might finish the chapter, but no, I guess there's still quite a bit left. Let's aim at finishing the chapter on Wednesday. We should be able to do it. So we'll aim at finishing the chapter on Wednesday. Do the written exercises. Do the written exercises. We will probably mark them on Monday. And we'll have the test on chapter 7 on Wednesday, a week from today. OK? That's the plan. Uh, uh, not a week from today, a week from this coming Wednesday. That's the plan. Mm. So for Wednesday, you need vowels and consonants chapter 14. And then chapter 4 will be assigned for the following week, uh, for the following time. Written and performance exercises, get those done early. And if you have questions, bring them to class. They're not that long, so just get them out of the way. And test will be on Wednesday of next week. And we'll be starting on chapter 8 pretty soon, which is all about acoustics. And acoustics is super, super fun. OK, we're really going to have a lot of fun with toys and all kinds of new ideas. OK, that's it. We'll see you on Wednesday.